Angelo. Mm. Very good. A lot has changed since Singapore's darkest days in the 1940s. This used to be an empty plot of land, but today there is a gigantic car park and a Siam food center that serves great food. Many people dine at the food center before visiting the beautiful island of Sentosa. The first location in this investigation has a dark connection to Sentosa. Many do not know of the grim history that ties it to the Japanese occupation. The British forces built forts and bunkers at these locations and a secret air raid shelter is where I'll do my ghost investigation and it's eerily close to the car park. Besides the air raid shelter, we will visit the defunct Capel Hill Reservoir and a Japanese tomb. There's little to no information about this mysterious bunker. What we do know is that it was either an air raid shelter or ammunition storage facility. Built during the colonial period, the Keppel Hill Reservoir fell into disuse due to its small capacity and it was eventually forgotten. During the Japanese occupation of Singapore from 1942 to 1945, the reservoir was used as a swimming pool by Japanese officers. On the 6th of April 1936, two soldiers from the British Army, Privates Alfred Birch and Francis Hubbard, aged 21 and 20, drowned. Francis tried to rescue Alfred, but they both struggled. 30 other regiment soldiers, who were about 45 meters from their location, swam quickly towards them, but both Alfred and Francis had already sunk to the bottom. On another occasion, on the 26th of March 1948, Chu Tek Pin, then aged 17, faced difficulty after his first plunge and quickly disappeared into the depths. His body was recovered the next day. This tomb is the final resting place of Japanese civilian naval engineer Komoto Ikesa, who worked in Singapore in 1942 but died nearly four months later due to exhaustion. The Japanese Imperial Navy had acknowledged his tireless work and commissioned this tomb in December 1943. However, it is unknown as to why he wasn't buried at the main Japanese cemetery in Haugang. visit three locations for this paranormal investigation and now that it's dark and it's a lot more quiet we're going to go in and our paranormal investigations starts now we are just on the outside of the air raid shelter it looks so different it feels different uh, compared to what I experienced earlier in the day I have a good friend of mine here his name is Salim Hadi he's a playwright he's a movie director he's never done this in his life Yes, never. Never? <laughs> never, yeah. Right, that's the first time for everything. Are you excited? Yeah, very. And um, more than uh, at least I'm here just to know the unknown. Mm. Okay. Um, you have your phone on airplane mode? Yes. Okay, I beautiful. Do. Okay, we're going to go in. Mm. We're going to do two things. Uh, we're going to try to uh, get an EMF reading. Okay. Uh, just to see whether, you know, uh, there's any whether we can get any EMF in there which I, I doubt so because there shouldn't be any power cables uh, above us or under us especially in this area okay uh, and the other thing we're gonna do is an EVP session that's the electronic voice phenomena okay. so we're gonna speak to them and then we're gonna see whether they whether they say anything back okay, okay? okay. all right ready to go in yes man. all right let's go We are the end of the air raid shelter. How do you feel, Salim? I've never been to this place before. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's looking very rustic for sure. Oh yeah, definitely. 
Nobody really knows, right, what this place was built for. Some say it's an air raid shelter, some say it's a bunker, some say it was to store ammunition. But it, it, it's not as long as, as a lot of stuff I've seen in Singapore, right? It seems rather small. But the one thing that is certain is that we don't know what went on in here during the Japanese occupation. I have a vertical EMF meter here. Uh, so I'm going to turn this on. And let's see whether we can make contact with any entity that is here. So I'm guessing you are either Japanese or you're British, um, or maybe you were from the Allied Forces, so it could be from India, it could be from Australia. Um, I'm wondering whether you want to make contact, because a short while ago, one of our lights that we use for cameras, uh, it doesn't seem to be working now. So I don't know whether you took the power out from the batteries, you drain all the power in order to create a, an action, right? So if you do want to do something, now's the time for you to do it. Uh, there's two of us here. My name is Noel. This is Salim. You can come up to us. You can come as close as possible. You can even touch this meter. Now, because we are way inside here, we shouldn't get EMF from any of the vehicles that are outside or even the cable cars that, that head to uh, Sentosa, right, and to Mount Faber. Or, or maybe you weren't even a soldier, maybe you were somebody that was living in the area and then passed on and you didn't know where else to go and you decided to make this place your home. So our producer, Shakil, just told us that we should move to the other side of, the, of this marriage shelter because he heard something there. So we're going to go check it out. I'm not counting on getting readings, right? The noises we heard earlier um, that came from the front of this marriage shelter, it could have been wildlife. We saw toads here earlier. It could be water droplets, it could be the wind. How do you feel? Um, I'm feeling very calm, actually. Mm. Uh, Though the air inside was a bit still, mm -hmm. uh, I think, uh, but other than that, coming outside is much more calmer. Yeah. yeah. And that means we got a steep climb up the hill. Jesus. So I'm here now at the Capel Hill Reservoir. It's got a dark past. Two soldiers drowned here, Francis and Alfred. And one of them tried to save the other. Alfred was swimming. He jumped in. He encountered some trouble. And then Francis jumped in after him. And then um, both of them disappeared. And there were soldiers nearby. They ran over. A whole lot of chaos going on. Nobody knows where these two gentlemen have disappeared to. It's only later on that this Malay dude came over. He dived in and he managed to retrieve four bodies. Then years later, a gentleman uh, by the name of Chu was very young, a young man, and he drowned here as well. There's quite possibly three entities, three spirits, three ghosts that we can communicate with today. If your spirits are still here, you've heard me mention your name. It's brought back uh, uh, this memory of you drowning. Uh, could you please come closer? Now, the reason why I'm standing here is that if anything were to try to push me, I've got the stairs behind me. Uh, I wouldn't want to fall into the water, um, mostly because I can't swim. So that's not, that's not very wise. I'm feeling a little something here. Okay, so Francis or Alfred, would you like to make contact? I've got a device here. Um, 
it's just to to detect whether you are nearby or not okay so if you want to make contact the first thing you can do is to touch this come as close as possible to me if you want to feed off my energy that's fine too Or if you are that young gentleman by the name of Chu that drowned here, maybe you want to make contact too. Okay, I'm going to leave this here. Now, I, I would imagine, right, if you were someone that drowned here, maybe what you did was you took steps up right to the top and then you dived off and then maybe you hit your head with uh, on a log that's submerged in the water do you have any regrets because you know maybe it wasn't something that you should have done right i i i know it's not something you should have done you shouldn't have been swimming here do you have any regrets do you miss your your families do you wish that you could have said goodbye if you speak loud enough, my microphone that's here maybe can pick up your voice or the microphone on, on our cameras can pick up your voice. I'm sure your, your family is right. I'm talking about the two soldiers that died here. I, I know you guys were soldiers. So, like, your family saw you off. You're supposed to go um, fight, you know, be men, right? And, and then for your family to find out like, oh man, they didn't die in battle. They died because they drowned on their R&R, &R, right? I think that would have sucked so bad for them. that I'm not hostile and I just want you to come closer no matter where you are here in this reservoir I want you to come as close as you can to me oh hello thank you for doing that thank you so much can you please do it again why do you do it when, when I was facing the other way because I thought I heard a voice oh thank you very much if you are British can you please touch the meter now? Did this guy spook you out because they, they walked closer to me? Now that we are alone, just try to make contact again. Just touch, touch the meter. I felt you close just now, man. It wasn't just the meter, right? Because before, Shaquille even pointed out that we had readings on the meter. I heard a voice coming from my left, right? Coming from there coming from there from there and then after that you lit this up so can you do this again please please I mean you know harm and I feel that I feel that something staring at me but I don't know from which direction like you know the feeling when you're being watched that, that's how I feel right now so I don't know whether it's a wildlife or, or is it an entity? Please touch the meter again. If you want me to leave this place, touch the meter. Give me a sign, man. Okay, that's it. You say, you know what? Screw you, dude. I don't want to keep touching the meter. I want to do something else. Then, then do it. Do it. What's the worst that can happen? Do you have a message to people in general? You seem to do it when, when my back is, is facing the meter. My daughter, she calls things like you, ghosty. So I decided that from now onwards, I'm going to call y'all ghosties. So is there a ghosty here, man? You seem to like touching this, this gadget whenever my back is, is against you. So you know what? I'm not even going to look at the gadget anymore.
say something, do something. I know there's a lot of toads in the background, but I thought I heard growling coming from the water. Salim, you would like to, to try your luck? So we will leave this place. We're gonna go up to the Japanese tomb now and we're gonna try to make contact there. Hopefully we have better luck. Let's go. place and why is it not like in Haogang the rest of your of your people are why here and I know you were working really hard you were overworked maybe you miss home did you take your life here the suicide forest and what they do is that when they are sick and tired of life walk into this forest and they hang themselves so is that what himself himself so is that what you did here now if you did take your life uh, I can sympathize with you because I've been in in a dark place before the little information that I got is that you were overworked and then you took your life kill huh? yeah I know huh? so, so, so. I don't know I don't know just uh, record there's more activity behind us than in front. Okay, then then let's go there. Yeah. Turn around. Please get the shit around me, man. Uh, somebody's running towards me. My cameraman, Asarudin, says that when he was pointing the camera towards me, right from behind, he heard uh, like somebody running towards him. Because I'm the one calling, asking for you to come forward. I'm asking you to come as close as possible to me so why do it to him are you coming closer Anjak dah habis ya tadi Tahu, aku dengar hmm? Aku dengar <laughs> It, Once you're done, just give Azhar a call You okay with it? You sure? Yeah Alright, 100% okay Always okay with it I tried to yeah, I think this thing is personal content oh, oh. Now Salim told me that Just at that time when they were moving off right To leave me alone here Said to himself Right in his mind If you are here give us a sign and then at that moment the camera fell off the tripod it hit him in the ankle and now the base plate of my camera is broken my cameraman has got no choice but to be squatting in front of me he's terrified as shit because what he did earlier you he heard you running up to him make this light up right so all you have to do is touch 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 
yellow. Mm. Very good. Wow. It's like a strange, but I can feel something like kind of leaning on me, like from the back. Stagnant. This is great, man. This is like the best reading that we've had because it's always been going up and down. But if you're able to push an object, <laughs> that means that means you're powerful. That means you got energy from somewhere. So either from like one of the many batteries we have here on set. So if you could get this to light up more, it's at three bars now. It's gone. I think it's gone, man. Yeah, I feel calm. Yeah, it was very tense earlier, right? Yeah. Yeah, and I had this this pressure on on my back, and then the, the pressure got got a little uncomfortable, and the EMF meter was. Uh, well, it lit up, and then now it's just boom, it's calm, calm as shit. Why do you try to touch him? No, no. Yes, yes. I, I feel a presence behind me. Oh, beautiful. Are you behind him? Let's go over there. Are you alright, bro? Yeah. So we are back here at this air raid shelter. We have had about four hours of um, where we were just out hiking, going from location to location. We figured that we'll give this place another chance. So instead of Asaruddin that's on camera, got Salim, right? I'll guess he is the camera operator now. And I'm sitting here. Uh, I can't move around too much because of the laser grid, so it's almost hitting my my left eye. So it's a little uncomfortable, but the team figured that we'll we'll do it this way. So we want to see if there's an entity here, whether it's going to pass through me or against the wall. If there is an entity here that would like to make contact, I'm going to turn on this. Vertical e uh, I'm going to turn on this vertical EMF meter again. Man, I'm so tired, I can't even think. Yeah, or you could come as close as possible. Yep, that's good. That's great, actually. Come closer. Did you die in battle? Did the... I have a question. Did the Japanese do something bad to you? I know that there are there are ghost spirits that like to pinch. So if you would like, you could pinch me now. I don't think I've, I've ever asked this question before. Um, do you feel alone? Like, do you feel lonely? Are you happy to be left alone? Do you want me to leave now? Okay, I'll leave in a bit, okay? Okay, I can understand that. I mean, we are intruding into your, your space. I'd like to thank you for 
letting us be here. I, I appreciate it a lot. And I will also appreciate it if you stayed here as well, you don't follow us. Okay? Okay, great. I will leave now. Um, I want to say take care of yourself, but, but that's, I don't know how you can do that. Um, somehow, what I, I'm feeling right now, like my gut feel, is that I feel sorry for either like your passing or for the people that uh, were once close to you. But I hope that you find peace and that they will find peace. And that's the most important thing and in this world. Is the f is finding peace. And one more thing before I leave, I sincerely hope that we'll never have another scenario here in Singapore where there'll be foreign soldiers on our land um, running the place or, or looking out for, for, the, for the approach of the enemy. Yeah, I hope that they never ever comes. Yeah. Did you see or feel anything? I saw your uh, EMF uh, going up to orange and then you know, going quite aggressively. Mm. Yeah, every time I ask a question. Yeah. Yeah. It wasn't an un uneasy feeling. That's that's definitely not it. But after a while, it was a little bit of like sorrow. So I don't know whether it's just me overthinking things, whether it's a from the entity that I was communicating with but uh yeah he, he, he wants to be left alone so thank you so much thank you so much for for communicating with me thank you so much for um being being nice about it yeah because i've been in in um situations where everything turned haywire but you're cool you're a cool ghosty man as we left Siaim after a grueling night of investigations, I couldn't help but wonder if there's more to discover in this location about Singapore's forgotten past. One thing is certain, it is great to be back after six years.